So Sean, in our last video, we talked about uh, protecting application data and unstructured data and how OneSafe uh, really brought some unique ways to do that, right? Uh, and, and you know, really reimagined backup, yep. right, in those cases. Let's now talk about recovery. How do we reimagine recovery? Yeah, so, so from the first video, we talked about really reimagining data protection, how you're going to protect this information. Snapshots through VMware for the, for the structured data and the physical or physical servers as well. But then most of the data that's unwieldy is the unstructured data, SMB and NFS. Right. So what OneSafe is, is a converged scale-out solution that actually satisfies both of those. So that's for the protection side. The way we're unique about recovering at is because underneath the covers with an object store, and I'll get into this in just a minute, you have some distinct advantages for those continuous snapshots every 90 seconds because everything is an object to us. Okay. Even though we're serving out NFS and SMB, uh, we do a number of things, right? We do the deduplication, compression, I'm just going to write compression, CDP, uh, and remote replication, right, okay. to, to protect all the information. But okay. it is different than a LUN or a volume that most of us are used to over the last couple right. of decades. Sure, and what I liked about that solution is is you kind of solve the problem by basically getting it where it shouldn't be and putting it where it kind of makes more sense to be, right? So yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so talk about how you guys are having advantage using that object store in a recovery standpoint. Yeah, so in a typical RAID LUN or volume basis, right, you have mm -hmm. parity, right? In right. this case, let's just say it's a simple RAID 5, even parity. Right. So many times that users are going to write new data to a LUN or a volume, you have to read all of this parity and then you're going to calculate out new parity, right, based upon what, it, what that new data is, which means that that original data is now gone from a LUN or a volume. You can't get it back, right? right? Mm -hmm. Now, there are ways you can snap a volume, right, and, and there, you can do that, but even those are sometimes not immutable to ransomware, which can actually disable, right. like, Windows VSS. Well, and there's complexity in the calculation, so there's a, a finite limit to it all, many times as well, too, right? Finite limit of how many snapshots you can have, correct. Yeah. As, as opposed to what OneSafe is, underneath the covers, is an object source. So now, Everything is an object to us, and we can have billions of objects and millions of snapshots, uh, 90 seconds, and hourly and daily, et cetera, for years. But the important thing from a recovery aspect is that this, not, these snapshots are immutable. Okay. So we I can't can, change them or modify them or delete them? You can't. Okay. And, and so when you go through this process of writing new data and changing a file, so I write my PowerPoint file, when which object of that PowerPoint file actually changes we actually create a new object over here. Gotcha. Okay, so the original is still there, but now we actually link that object all the way up the tree. So now everything points directly to the file as I'm accessing it, even though I now have a new object. Right. The original is there, it can't be deleted. And that's where our continuous snapshots every 90 seconds preserves the file system as your users see it. Right. And all the objects that are related and linked through our B tree structure here, and it's very efficient. So can I control how long I want to maintain that history? You can, on a, on a per share basis, you can decide I want to keep snapshots for a week, a month, year, or forever. Okay. Um, and all of our snapshots are deduplicated against the primary data. Okay. So for space consumption, you know, assuming you're not writing at 10 terabytes a day and deleting 10 right. terabytes, you're going to have that deduplication not only within the share, but across all the shares within the cluster. Okay, and then the immutability, I assume, then gives me a really good uh, uh, protection against, say, a ransomware attack, as an example. It does, because you can actually recover any size file system you have in a few seconds okay. like this. So you can create a clone of the live file system for test depth, but you can also promote a snapshot from any recovery point that you want. Okay. So now, so let's say this is my engineering share here, right? Mm -hmm. And this is, I write a new, right? So I take a snapshot. Here's my first update. I take a snapshot of that. Now I've got another update over here. And again, we link all of these together because they're all objects in a B tree structure. So even if there are more objects over here, that's fine. But what I can do is I can recover my entire engineering share for all my CAD CAM, high performance stuff. I can recover this whole 100 terabyte share, it doesn't matter, in a couple seconds. And now I have, from my continuous snapshot number one, two, three, et cetera, I can pick this one, and now the file system is 
gotcha. the, in the state of only the objects that matter as of that particular point in time. And, and essentially, you, the way you're getting there is you're not, the way they're so fast, you're not moving data, really. You're just manipulating that tree, essentially. Exactly. You're not moving any data. You're just changing the pointers. Mm -hmm. And now the file system and all the snapshots after this are there. And in a few seconds, you have an immutable object store that's now presenting the file system as of continuous snapshot number three to all of your users that can instantly access that. And you can make this read writable, or if it's a recovery from ransomware, you want to be a little cautious, you can do that recovery and have that be an immutable share that's read only until you figure out actually what went wrong. Gotcha. Well, that makes a lot of sense. So then uh, let's talk a little bit about application recovery because obviously that still is you know paramount. Right? You've got to get both back when you right. need it, right? Yeah. Um, so this is on the unstructured data, right? That 75 terabytes we talked about in the other video. Okay. The difference here and what we do uh, is we have patents around um, the recovery for these VMs and we call it uh, virtual boot. But when you're going to recover uh, your SQL Server VM, you can begin that process in less than a second. It okay. begins to boot up immediately. So, a couple things. With um, this is all managed through one system again, right? Okay. So that's your uh, global management tool for all the one one safes, right? Exactly. Cloud-based yeah. management for one safe, regardless of data center location or how many clusters. You get to decide uh, how, what, obviously, what recovery point for the snapshots for the VMs. But the key thing is, is you're going to be able to choose which recovery point you want in just a few mouse clicks in one system. But you have no staging necessary, so you don't have to create a VM that you're going to recover that into. Because when you do that in just a couple clicks, SQL Server begins to boot off of OneSafe, that recovery point where the backups are taking place all the time. Yeah, and, and I when you guys first uh, kind of showed me that feature, I kind of referred to it as a streaming recovery, right? Because yeah. it's essentially almost like a Netflix movie. I'm pulling it in real time, right? It is. It's, a, it's like a streaming recovery because SQL Server doesn't know that it's actually getting the data from OneSafe. It mm -hmm. thinks, and this is where our patents are, it thinks it's getting the data from the primary data store on the all flash or whatever it is, right? right? But in reality, we're redirecting the read requests to us and sending them back to the application as it needs it. And so after it boots up, it's live and it's beginning to be used, and the recovery is happening for the data as it needs it in the order the application needs it. At the same time, we're doing a lazy recovery back to the primary data store for everything else right. the application is not immediately using. At the same time, if there are any writes coming down from the application, it goes directly to the data store. Just it like always. Just like always. It yeah. doesn't go to one safe. Now, when that when the process is done, the application's up and running, it's completely restored. There's no vMotion necessary. Right. right? That's so huge. It's huge. It t saves a lot of time. If you're going to recover a, a 5 or 10 terabyte VM, you want to do it just once. You don't want to do another vMotion to take that time again and take right. a planned downtime or a planned migration. So that simplifies things dramatically, and that's the virtual boot pattern. Well, and I, and I think not only does it help with speed, it just eliminates another point of potential mistake, right? That it, it's because, you know, we're, we always draw these with one VM, but in a disaster, we're talking, you know, dozens, if not hundreds of VMs, the chances of you making a mistake uh, eventually come up, right? Exactly. And, and you begin, you know, like I said, you begin to boot in a second. It's going to take a while to move the data. Right. But now that's 25% of your data. This way, you've got 75% of the data. If you're going to recover right. 100 terabyte share, do it, however you do it, either with us in virtual boot or do a VMO, it's going to take a lot of time to move 100 terabytes of data. You can do it in a couple seconds. So we've we've talked about sort of recovering the unstructured data. We've talked about recovering apps, application data. Both of these are on-prem scenarios, which in most cases should be the majority of the situations. But in that worst case where disaster does strike, what are some of the options? So you have a couple of options. Um, you can remotely replicate this to another one safe cluster if you have a second data center. Okay. And all of the shares or some of the shares, you get to decide on a per share basis, one to one, one to many replication, um, or many to many as well, uh, okay. architecture. And you can also clone shares, as we talked about here, for uh, recovering or promoting a snapshot, where you can have different instances of each share as of you know, month one, month two, month three, and these can be standalone, right? So that's if you have a second data center. You can also, even if you have a second data center, you can still go to Storage Crafts Cloud or S3, and you can actually recover all these applications and run them in our cloud where you have networking application data services. So that's true disaster recovery as a service at that point. It is. That's full disaster recovery as a service, or if you want to go to S3 and just replicate the data and then do that process yourself of bringing up the VMs, uh, you can do that. But with this solution, physical or virtual, doesn't matter. We can do the virtual boot recovery. Now, the other interesting thing about virtual boot is it's a, it's a way to fail back from the cloud. 
So oh, if you're going to do that, you can actually virtual boot from our cloud on-premises to make that recovery of the failback process a lot easier. Well, I, you know, that's something not to overlook because I think a lot of people get so fixated on what is it going to be like to recover from the cloud, they forget that they, at some point they might want to come back and how you do that process can be really ugly when you start asking other vendors about it. Yep, it can be. Yeah. All right, well, Sean, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks, George. So there you have it. You know, recovery obviously is a key aspect of, uh, of data protection and knowing how that process is going to work is something we always talk to uh, uh, clients about. So this is, gives you a lot of ways to do uh, recovery very, very quickly, and especially in the cloud where you can fail back. I, I, I really think the streaming type of recovery uh, virtual boot, uh, as StorageCraft calls it, is a, a super critical feature as you start to look at these capabilities. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Have a great day.